Good afternoon. It is indeed a pleasure to welcome you to the Center for Online and Continuing Education's Faculty Lounge Live session. Um, I am honored today to introduce you to Frank DeLatore. Frank is an um, online instructor with the uh, School of Criminology and Criminal Justice and a fairly recently retired from 35 years. 35 years. Former Chief Assistant Broward Public Defender. So he brings a great deal of personal background into his classes. So Frank, would you uh, tell us a little bit about your own history? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It's just wonderful and an honor for me to be here with you collaborating on another project. Uh, we've had an opportunity to do QM classes and things like that, so thank you. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I became a lawyer in 1983 and a public defender that same year. And um, I rose from assistant public defender to chief assistant public defender. Uh, I did retire uh, in June of 2018, one of the happiest days of my life, by the way. <laughs> Um, and a little bit about my career there. I tried any case from a juvenile case, DUI, to first degree murder cases. Um, along the way, I started teaching at FAU in 1994 wow. as an adjunct. Uh, Dr. Massey, Charles Massey, hired me uh, by the phone. He needed an instructor to start on Monday. He was calling me on Friday. I go, I can do it, no problem. And here we are today, uh, 1994. I became a full-line instructor uh, last year in 2022. I started my second year. It's it's a great job. I, I don't call it work. It, it, it's fun. Uh, I, I enjoy it more than the students, and it's just a wonderful uh, thing that I'm doing and, and love it. And we invited Frank to share with us because I there are not – very many online instructors that are more engaging with their students. So we invited Frank to join us today to share with us some of the tips and tricks for keeping your students engaged. So yeah, um, thank you for that. Um, so the first thing I do is starting off with my syllabus. And um, if you see my, my syllabus, you see about the fourth, fifth line down, my phone number. That's my cell number. I give it to my students. Uh, some of my colleagues think I'm crazy, but I started doing that when I was a public defender, actually, uh, from the very first uh, day. Uh, my boss told me the biggest problems he had was the clients not being able to get a hold of their lawyers. So I gave my, my number. And at that time, 1983, we didn't have those little computers that we carry with us right in our pocket, right? Yeah. I gave them our home number. So, yes. I gave my clients that were charged with murder, sexual battery, robbery, theft, burglary, my home number. Because I didn't want to have that complaint. I can't get a hold of my lawyer. My wife, when she found out, went crazy. Wait a minute. You're giving somebody charged with sexual battery our home number with murder? With, I, well, how can you do that? I go, sweetheart, first of all. They're alleged to be a sexual batterer, murderer, <laughs> and robber. If I do my job, they won't be that. As you can imagine, that didn't go over well with her. Uh, but to this day, I give my students my cell number. They actually don't call very often. More often than not, they text. Yeah. They email. Um, they do anything, like my family, they prefer to communicate with me by email and text rather than talk to me. And my students are the same way, but they have my number if they need it. When will they use it? Look, the most frustrating thing about being an online learner is you're taking an exam, your internet fails, right? Something happens on campus. Don't freak out, there's my professor's number, Call me. That's when I get calls. And I handle them appropriately, I think. I said, relax. We're going to take care of this. We're going to reset your exam, and you're going to be able to take it calmly after you take a deep breath. 
Um, uh, so great. that's worked out great. I continue to get my cell number. It's never been abused from by a client or a student. So it's worked out great. Uh, I think students appreciate it uh, that they have their instructor's uh, phone mm -hmm. number. And the fact that they they know that you you're willing to share that with them gives them a, a sense of um, satisfaction of knowing that you're there. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Look, I give them to my clients. I'm certainly going to give it to my my students. Yeah. The second thing that I do um, right away is is announcements, weekly announcements, and I learned that from you, from go, taking classes at COSI, uh, how to keep engagement, instructor presence in your class, and announcements are a first way, second way to, that I do it. And I do weekly announcements starting the first week. And the first week you see my announcement, I do also a Zoom uh, class, and I had developed a success document that I share with them. How are you going to succeed in this class? Wow. Follow these steps and you will succeed. And they include read the doc, uh, the announcements every, every, every uh, Monday. I prepare them on Saturday. They, they obnoxiously come out the first thing <laughs> uh, Monday morning when they open up their email, they're still Tori sending me another announcement. Uh, and it gives them the schedule of what we're going to be doing that week. My success document tells them what to do to get an A in the course. Uh, of course, read the text, uh, read the instructor PowerPoints or notes, read the text PowerPoints and notes. I had done, as you know, a video lecture for every chapter. Look at the video lecture. Uh, and as you'll see, we do Zoom reviews with them. So the announcements are key for me to stay engaged with my students. Absolutely, and I know that they 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 appreciate that. Um, and I also want to remind everyone that you are absolutely welcome to ask questions, to open your mic, to to uh, address anything that that we are talking about. So, um, so what else? Okay, so um, I've gone to um, courses. Uh, to try to learn how to stay engaged with my students online. Um, one of the things, of course, I took suggested to do office hours, Zoom office hours. So I tried that. And I said, I'm going to be here, sitting here. You can come in and out as you wish. Mm -hmm. um, so you have a waiting room and I'll, I'll have you in. And so I did that. It was a horrible failure for me. <laughs> horrible. I would sit there by myself uh, and nobody came. It's like I gave a party and nobody came. Uh -oh. um, I changed that. I changed that. What works better for me, and I sincerely meant this, and, I, and it's on my syllabus, I'm available seven days a week for. Just call me, email me, text me. We'll set up a Zoom appointment and we'll meet that way. Yeah. That's worked out much better. Again, Although they have my cell number, they prefer to communicate with me, like my family, instead of talking to me by texting, emailing me. Uh, but that's worked out much better for me than what I've learned in some of the courses is setting up a Zoom schedule. Nobody came. But the other way where I offer any day of the week, we'll set an appointment, I'll send you a Zoom link, and, and we'll meet. So that's worked out much better for me. I don't know what, how it's worked out for other things. Another big thing that I learned from one of my dear friends, um, senior instructor Ricky Langlois, is the opening introduction discussion board questions. Yeah. He told me, and I follow yeah. his lead on this, read them. Read them. And then comment on them. Yeah. And one of the biggest things I learned is students like all of us want to be known by their name. Mm -hmm. Now I have 280 students this semester. There's no way I'm going to learn 280 names. I'm going to try, but I'm going to miserably fail at yeah. doing it. One of the things that I do in reading these introduction discussion board questions, for instance, students will tell you, my name is Nicholas, but I go by Nick. 
my name is Danielle, but I go by Danny. Mm -hmm. I'm going to forget that. Okay. I'm going to forget what I had, what I'm going to have for lunch. That goes my, hey, look, as you get older, nothing gets better, especially my memory. So I'll write it down. And then when I grade Nicholas's discussion board question, when I grade Nicholas's essay, I'm not going to call him Nicholas because I'm going to have it in my notes. Yeah. I'm going to call him Nick. When I call great Danielle's assessments and I comment on it, I'm not going to call her Danielle. I'm going to call her Danny. And so just little things like that helps me connect with my students. And we, we uh, intentionally include that student introduction discussion board in the start here for that reason, because when they go into a face-to-face -face class, they chit chat and they talk with each other and that gives them the opportunity to share information back and forth, even in the online, so that they feel like they're a part of the community. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if you can just learn their names, it's so important. Look, let me share a story. I was an adjunct instructor, and as you know, uh, I'm obnoxiously early to everything. <laughs> uh, so I go to my class a half hour early. I'm waiting out there, uh, SO 270, for it. there's a class there. Uh, ready to come in and I'm waiting and oh my god I'm an adjunct and all of a sudden I see the dean walking by I go oh my goodness there's the dean and she walked by and she goes hi Frank how are you I go what she knows my name we all want people to know sure. our names yep so that's why it's so important I think as an instructor to do the best you can yeah to learn your students names and that's a little trick that I use to learn my students name because God knows my memory is shot. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, hear, I hear you. I'm, uh, I'm on that same path, too. Yeah. I'm on that same path. Um, so what, else, what are some of the other things that you, uh, you yeah, incorporate? Um, so another thing, as you well know, because you helped me out tremendously in this, is I do synchronous classes for my fully online classes. When did I start this? I started this COVID, right? Yeah. Uh, that horrible period uh, in our history uh, when we, I had a fully online class, but we went away for spring break and we never came back. Absolutely. And so I was, I was panicked. I was panicked. I, I got a, a class of fully online learners that, uh, excuse me, fully face to face. They've never taken an online class. What am I going to do? So I reached out to my friend, Judy Summers, at like nine o'clock one evening. <laughs> I, 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 I sent her an email, not expecting to hear back for uh, maybe a couple of days. Half hour later, I got an email. She says, I can set you up with Denny from our office and you can come and do videos. So now I have videos in every one of my classes. Yeah. Uh, that's another way for the students to see online, hey, that's a human being back there. It's not just the face yeah. putting assignments in here for me to do. He's here to help me learn it. So I've also done fully synchronous classes. That's for, what I was going to say. Tell me about those synchronous classes yeah. for an online class. So I was an adjunct, and I was also an adjunct at Nova Southeastern University. They mandated you do on uh, four classes. So I said, I'm going to do that at FAU. But I think to be fair, when I do that, I tape them. Okay. Because some people take online classes because they work. Right. They can't come. And to be fair to them, I tape them. And now they're, it's available for them. Now, the advantage for the student that comes to the live synchronous class is they can ask their questions mm -hmm. online. Right. How do I take care of that with the person who watches the tape? Because it's not fair for them not to be able to ask a question. Easy, right? Right. You got my cell number. You got my email. Reach out to me. I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to get back to you so, so quickly. You're going to think this guy's weird. And I am. <laughs> I'm on medication for it. It just hasn't kicked in. I check my email much too often. And so I'll get back to them. Um, so I do four synchronous classes. When do I do them? First week. Okay. First week of class, 
we have a synchronous class and that's where I introduce myself to them. I go over the syllabus. Uh, I go over how to succeed document in this, in this course. Right. Um, but then the most popular ones, right? It's not that is I do a review before uh, every yes. major test. And that's a synchronous class. I had two lot yesterday, one at five and one at seven because I start my first exams. I'll have two this Sunday for my other two courses. So, and they'll wow. get a synchronous class, which is recorded for every major assessment. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and I suspect that your, uh, that your students uh, truly appreciate that. Yeah, um, I, they do. Uh, another thing that I do, and it's simple to do on Canvas, and I do this because, as you know, I had two college students that graduated, and I know how forgetful they are. And so through Canvas, one of the things I do to stay in contact with my students is there's a segment when they're, you're in your grade book that you can click and remind the students, hey, this is due. So I do that reminder. Okay. Uh, it looks like we might have a, a question or a comment from oh, the audience. Okay, so hi there. Um, Julie writes, how does Frank decide what time of day to do the synchronous meetings? And she also writes, can you talk a little bit about how he schedules tests to accommodate working students or students who might be outside our time zone? Yeah, wow, great question. What a great question. What time do I do uh, to accommodate the students? I try to do them at the end of a work day, right? Five or seven. I can also accommodate that, right? I'll, I'll, and, and I'll get into that in just a second. Um, if students complain and say, hey, can you do it at this time? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so that's important uh, when to schedule those. And I found like the end of a normal work day, although that's not gonna work for some of our students, right? Because they're, they're hostesses, servers, and they're working at night. Yeah. Uh, that's why I record them because it would not be fair otherwise. Absolutely. And can you yeah. read the second part of that question? Because there's my memory again. Yeah, the second part was, can he talk a little bit about how he schedules tests to accommodate working students or students who might be outside our time zone? Absolutely. What a great question. So I schedule them for one week. Starts on Monday, right? We've all learned this. Probably most of us do so, and they end on Sunday. But you got to be open-minded and open when you're an online instructor. Let me share a story. True story. I had a, a, a email from a student. I can't take the exam. I, I need an extension. Of course, can, can you give me a reason? <laughs> email comes back. Yes, I can give you a reason. I'm in Afghanistan. And my troop is going on a mission tonight. Extension granted. <laughs> yeah. Right? You don't know who you're who you have in your online class or where they're at. Um, I think you have to be open, open when you're an online instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be uh, students come first, yeah. student success comes first. Yeah. I tell my students in that first meeting. If you succeed, I succeed. Yeah, absolutely. If you fail, I fail. But we're going to fight about that. Yes. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm going I'm to fight you. Yeah. Right? Okay. So you have the exams are available for a week. Yes. But once they open it up, they have a specific amount of time to take it in? Yeah. So um, my, uh, my exams, as you well know, are starting to... Um, change from objective <laughs> to uh, more subjective, right? Yeah. Uh, especially when we go up to the higher learning bloom mm -hmm. verbs, uh, I have found out 
the hard way that uh, you do, you have to show, give them an opportunity to show you and explain how they're going to apply right. the student and jump. So I give them an hour um, once they click in to complete that exam. Okay. And they now include objective questions and subjective questions. Excellent. Excellent. So you get a, a, a really good perspective of, of how they know, what they know and how they can show you what they know. Yes, absolutely. And, and I've learned that uh, the hard way going through the QM, um, uh, QMing a class and, and, and learning how to succeed in that way. And one of the ways is when your instructor uh, designer tells you to do something, do it. That's an inside joke. I would have got 100% if I had listened to this lady next to me, but I didn't. Well, but, but it worked out it okay. It worked out at the end. It worked out okay. Yeah. And uh, so how, uh, um, we have another question. I have one for you. Uh, I just wanted to mention to Frank, uh, easy as my colleague, we talk all the time about best practices. And Frank, you said something important about uh, the individual over in Afghanistan. And that's, I know that's not the first time, but we had a poll come out uh, at the university where we realized that, or the data suggested that over 65% of our students work full or part-time, and many of them also have families. Uh, and you and I have had discussions about this. How does that weigh in on your sort of decision making as you set your times and, you know, you're working with your students? Can you share that with everyone? Yeah. Wow. Um, I just think when you're an online instructor, you have to be more open uh, with students, uh, listening to what their uh, concerns are what they're they, they're asking you for um i'm probably very liberal and granting extensions uh accommodations are important uh to give to these students look uh like you said ricky a majority of our students work work full time but many of our students have families uh, they come home from work then they feed their kids and now they're opening up their lesson to be online so I have to be mindful of that, uh, and I think, again, I, I want them to succeed uh, because I'm selfish. I'm selfish because if they succeed, I succeed. And Ricky, one of the things, uh, in, in addition to what he was saying, one of the things we uh, recommend to the faculty that we work with is a, um, a, a brief questionnaire that includes what's the best times for you to be available, and uh, and and that works out really well because it gives you a range of times that you can uh, that you can help them. I, I think that's so true. And and to your point, Ricky, um, how do we know that? How do we know what the student needs? Um, and one of the things I did again because of COVID um, was I started, uh, and I still do it to this day a, a mid-semester check-in. Mm -hmm. And I first did it in COVID because I was concerned about the students. You know, we were face-to-face yeah. -face and then they left. So I go, how can I get these students to communicate with me? It was easy. Offer extra credit. Uh, and so I opened up a discussion board and I said, it's a check-in. And for this first check-in, all I asked was, tell me how you're doing. How are you doing personally and how are you doing with school? And offering just two points, extra credit, I got like 95% of this 70 person class entered the discussion board and share with me and their classmates yeah. how we're doing. What did I find out? I found out that many of them had lost their jobs. Yep. Many of them had gotten sick. Many of them were falling behind in their studies. So from this horrible time in our history here at FAU in the United States, COVID, I developed this mid-semester check-in and I still have it mm -hmm. because I used this spot 
accommodations, spot surveys to try to improve. But what good does it do me if I wait till the end of the semester? I can't fix it when it was broken. So what I started, which I learned from a class uh, from AQ, is what's called the start, stop, continue. So I do the same check-in at the eight week point of the semester. And I put in a discussion board. I go, I want you, to, if you want two extra points, extra credit on your next exam, answer this. Tell me something in the course that I should start that I haven't been doing. Tell me something that I'm doing that is so obnoxious that you want me to stop. And I want you to tell me something that maybe I'm doing right that I should continue. So it's called start, stop, and continue. And to get those two points, they had to have at least one element in under each category, right? Because what do I want to avoid? I want to avoid that thing that we see in spot when they say what can be changed and you hear, oh, nothing can be changed. The class is perfect. No, the class is not perfect. <laughs> I'm not perfect. Just today, my wife, before I left, gave me five things to illustrate that I wasn't perfect. So I want the students to be honest because yeah. that's how I'm going to get better. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. My wife does it every day. Tell me so I can fix it. And so this has worked out tremendously for me because I'm getting this feedback when I can do something about it. Yeah. I get it in a spot at the end of the semester, I can't do anything. So that's worked out really well. And that helps me uh, get information. Hey, you know, you're doing a synchronous, synchronous class at seven. That's not helping me. I go to work at seven. Okay, no problem. I have one at five. Okay. And so what's your, what, what kind of student response do you get from, from this, uh, this type of people? Well, that's great. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm sharing with you my spot evaluations. Um, I, and this one had to do more with me nagging them as I say, your assignment is due Sunday. And I'll do that on Wednesday. On Saturday, your assignment is due tomorrow. On Sunday, you're, <laughs> this is it. It's due now. Uh, and most of the students appreciate that, as you can see uh, from the spots. Um, but not all students will yeah. appreciate that. And if we scroll down to, to, uh, to one that you see, one was, Deltori is pretty obnoxious. You know, you should stop nagging <laughs> us. We can do this. Um, that was the minority. Um, yeah. If that was the majority, I would have stopped, but I haven't. I did it with my own two kids, and yeah. now I do it with my yeah. new 280 kids that I have this semester. Can you show the, uh, the other ones? The, uh, scrolling up. Yeah, there we go, some of the. So, um, I, I, these are good. You know, some of the students really appreciate that I am uh, engaged with them, that I communicate with them. And, but as you go along, this one student, and he was, he or she, I'm not gonna reveal the person, I, I don't know the person's name, uh, made it clear to me that they didn't appreciate being reminded as many times as I did. Okay, I get it, I get it, <laughs> get it. Just to show you, you you're not perfect. And uh, I think you said something about, uh, okay, we have another question. Okay, yeah, so uh, we actually have two. Uh, the first one okay. is uh, from Sarah. Uh, it looks like you have high spot completion rates. How do you do it? Oh, bribery. <laughs> yeah, um, again, I learned this from my, uh, my good friend. Um, Senior instructor Ricky Langlois told me a long time ago, you want high, uh, high in spot returns, give them something. I do. I'll give them, again, that's that famous two points. Amazing what FAU students will do for two extra credit points. And the way I do it, it's obviously, I don't know if a particular student filled out. I say I want 70%. Yeah. Uh, spot participation, and you can easily find this checking in every day. And yeah. um, 
If they get 70% spot participation, I'll give them the two points on their last uh, exam. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm proud. I've been teaching here since 1994. Uh, haven't always used this, but since I started it, I've only had one class not reach 70%. Uh, and usually 70, 80, uh, 90%. I taught a, my first time teaching a graduate course this summer, and I only had 14 students. I had 13 out of 14 students respond nice. on, on the spot nice. uh, for the spot survey. So, yeah, I do it by bribery. <laughs> and what was the other question? So the second question comes from Sierra. What is one of your favorite things about being a professor? Um, yes, um, my favorite things about being an instructor is that um, mentoring students. I get the biggest kick in the world. Uh, I'm a lawyer. And so people that want to go to law school kind of gravitate toward me. And I, I really enjoy that. Um, I'm the uh, mock trial uh, advisor, faculty advisor, and coach for our mock trial team here at FAU. Um, and so I, I get a kick out of mentoring students, helping them get into law school, but I don't leave them that because you, law school is a real anxiety-ridden period in a person's life, and I know that because I went through it. So the first thing I do for my, um, my students that I want to go to law school that reach out to me is I mentor them how to do well in the LSAT. Um, and then I mentor them how to do well in law school, but I don't leave it at that. At the end of this semester, for the third year in a row, I will do a, a, a class for all my students that are graduating and going to law school. And it's a little seminar uh, right. that I, I, I sneak around, find an empty class and say, <laughs> let's go in this class. And what do I do? I teach them how to brief a case. Wow because that's what we're gonna to have to do in law school. And what that will do for them is that first semester when they're one else, it'll give them a little head, stop on, head start on their fellow one else students. Yeah, They'll catch up, but for that very first couple months, they'll be the star of the show. Yeah. Um, I get these same students calling, emailing me. They don't call me, they email me. Oh, they didn't have my number. And they say, listen, I'm freaking out. I go, don't freak out. The person sitting on your left, he's freaking out. The person sitting on your right, she's freaking out. It's normal. You can do this. And I do. I have one student, I'm so proud of her. Um, she, she, after one else, she was number 16 in her class. Wow. Made law review and had her article published. Wow. So, Super. you know, this is a type of relationship that you can develop with a person that's an instructor, it goes beyond graduation mm -hmm. from Florida Atlantic University. Uh, so that's what I enjoy the most out of being an instructor here at Florida Atlantic yeah. University. Obviously, I like it. I've been doing it since 1994. Yeah. And that strategy would, would be effective no matter what field. I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, so what... Um, you had said something about uh, student the the student tests. Yeah. Um, so I just did this today, and I shared it with you. Um, I had two tests opened up this week, so I will go because I don't have a life, <laughs> and I will check those tests many the, my grades to see if anybody turned in a test. I had one, and the student got a seventy eight, and so I immediately clicked on there. I go, hey, I, I, I went over your test. I did. She had 11 wrong, right? And it was an objective test. The first test of the year is so objective. I haven't made a message yet. Um, and you got 11 wrong. And you know what? I checked and everything that you got wrong was in my study guide. And I went over it last night in the review. You can improve. And I offer her an opportunity to make a Zoom meeting with me where I will go over the exam with her. Wow. Why not, right? If yeah. this was a face-to-face -face class, I give a test. The next class, I'm going to go over that test. How can I change that online? 
Just because you're taking online doesn't mean you shouldn't have that same learning opportunity. Right. So most students, unfortunately, don't take me up on it. This student did. Great. And I said, well, the last test is going to be handed in on Sunday. Anytime Monday through after that, give me three days that are good for you. I'll pick one. I'll set up a Zoom meeting and send you the link. So I'm going to be going over her tests with her. I'm going to give her uh, strategies, how to succeed, because I'm going to tell her, look, my definition of insanity is doing the (laughs) same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. What what did you do to study here? Because I know you don't want to see, although at the Del Torre household, we celebrated C's. Yeah. We, you want an A. Let's see how we can get you the A. What did you do and what can we do differently? So that's something I offer all the students. And all it takes is, and I make a comment on every student's test. And I review it and I'll I'll make a comment. Now, I'm not going to waste too much time on a person that got an A, right? Yeah. Because that's a self-motivating person. They get, I say, outstanding, great job. But I'm going to spend time with those students that, uh, got a C or below a C. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be uh, uh, talking to them, uh, reaching out to them. I want them to succeed. I think we might have another question. Okay, so we do. It's um, from Dr. Jessica Lopez Velez. I would like to know how he came up with these great ideas to engage online students. Um, that's a great question. Um, And we got some incredible, caring people that are colleagues here. First time I wanted to teach online, um, I went to my director, Dr. Smickla. I said, I want to teach online. I think it's the wave of the future. I I I don't want to be left behind. I want to do it. He goes, that's a great idea. Go speak to this guy, Langua. He's our online guy. He, he, He... He'll give you 10, 15 minutes. I went over there, um, knocked on his door, introduced myself. That 10, 15 minutes turned into two hours. Ah, uh, Yeah, no surprises. I didn't feel comfortable teaching online without learning how to do it. I took a class at COSI. And it's a class I should have paid for. But I didn't pay for it. They gave me a stipend. Are you, <laughs> are you kidding me? Um, I can't imagine teaching online without uh, taking a class. Right now, I'm continuing trying to become better, yeah. um, taking classes uh, for free again from AQ that FAU pays for, uh, learning different techniques how to do this. Um, so I reach out to this young lady next to me uh, for help uh, to teach me how to do it and and. And the old deletory didn't listen to her. But now when she says jump, I say how high. So that's how I do it. There's so many people, especially for me, that are smarter than me, know more about this than me. And the only thing that I do well is I knock on their door and, and keep knocking until they answer. Uh, and But there, there's so many people out there willing to share their knowledge and help you be a better instructor. Well, and, and a good bit of it is also has to do with the fact that you are open to improving, to, to, to learning, to making your, as you said, when your students succeed, you succeed. Yeah. Um, so I've been married 40 years. So you can't be married 40 years unless you, you're willing to change, right? <laughs> uh, and one other thing you said uh, you you mentioned as we were talking was having some idea of um, how much time the students are spending. Yeah, great point. Um, I, and and thank you for jogging my failing memory. Um, absolutely. Um, there's so many things in Canvas um, that can show you what your students are doing. Right. You just go to your navigation tool on your right. You click on people and you see how much time a student has spent on your class and tells you when's the last time they were in your class. Yeah. Uh, so that's incredibly important. Another tool uh, that we have that I've used 
for, for many, many semesters is the success network. Um, the success network is another tool I have to reach out to students that are not doing well. And I had used it and it changed and I was having problems with it. I put in a ticket and now I'm using it again. Before, when a student was not doing well, I used to go and what they call raise a flag. And I tell them what was happening. That, that note would go to the counselor. So now I have somebody else nagging them to do well. Uh, so I used a successful network. I do that once again. Uh, four students did not will, do well in their first assessment. I went on there and sent what I call concern letters. Again, learned this from my friend, Mr. Langua, uh, Instructor Langua, and my wife jokes about it. She goes, are you sending another concern letter? I go, yeah, I am. And it's because these emails that I sent out start out with, I'm concerned about you. Yeah. You got this on the exam. You can do better. Let, let's, let's work on this. What can we do to get you to do better, to succeed? Because I'm selfish. I'm not doing this for you. Because if you succeed, I succeed. Yeah. So I sent out these I'm concerned letters or emails to the students. So that's through the Success Network or through Canvas. Sounds like a topic we need to uh, cover a little bit more in depth, I believe. Uh, because I think that we are probably getting pretty close on time. And so I'm extremely grateful to you, Frank, for joining us and for being so open and willing to share your success. And we are grateful to everyone who joined us today. Please, uh, please continue to step into the into the limelight if we can, we can uh, invite you to join us on one of these as well. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me.